Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Today, everyone is a product and everyone needs marketing to succeed. So let's talk about it right now on Marketing Unfiltered with award-winning creative expert, Wendy Cooper and her co-host, John Hamilton. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It is... uh if you're watching, you can see I'm primping with with, with my my hair is is down this week, and <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to tell a hair story. Okay, I'm just not going to do it. Don't make me do it, Tony. Oh, Don't go make ahead. me do it. <laughs> go ahead. I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody. This is C Spot Talk, and it is Marketing Unfiltered. And Tony is here as always with me tonight. Unlike my co-host, who where's he at? Yeah, you know what? It's one of those Tuesdays. Oh, John yes, just right. doesn't know what. <laughs> What? There's four Tuesdays in a month. <laughs> yeah, no. Poor John. Yeah. So John is only here, um, unfortunately, two Tuesdays out of every month, <laughs> except for when there's five Tuesdays in a month. Right, right. Uh, so Tony, what's new with you? Well, you know, just working my tails off, and that's about it. I have to say, you sent out a. I, I'm very fortunate because Tony actually owns the station here at the network at UBN, and <clears throat> he has two shows. On air with Tony Sweet and Truth Be Told. That's right. <clears throat> and um, somehow, somehow, I don't know how, Tony's on my show every every Woo-hoo! Tuesday night. <laughs> I love it, Wendy. I love Wendy. <laughs> well, I appreciate all that you, you do. Oh, and okay. I'm watching the station grow. It's really amazing. Today you sent out an email. I think it's, what, 54 strong? 54 shows. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. How long it's, has it been? Uh, this month is our third year anniversary so 54 in three years not too bad yeah that's pretty cr- that's pretty crazy 54 mm-hmm. how many shows can you actually handle oh god 100 120 if we you know because we have two channels and and 24 hours a day so i mean if so, somebody yeah, can I fit guess the time slots you can fill quite a few yeah yeah, yeah, but that would mean somebody being here all night long. And like Tony doesn't want to do that. No, I was going to say, I think <laughs> I'm my show enough. my show's yeah. the latest show. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Actually, we have a 9 to 10 show now. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Oh. Elevate the conversation with Dr. 420. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, what's interesting is I think that my show is the only business show. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, so we have to grow that category here. Even. I know, but you're always going to be the leader. Yeah, well, I'm the, I'm the leader. leader. <laughs> the leader. So it's exciting tonight. We have uh, a guest in studio. You haven't seen her, nor but you've probably seen about her or heard about her with Twitter. Um, Jennifer Bon and I know how to say this. Buon Antone. Ooh. Buon Antone. <laughs> Uh, is Very here sexy. with us, yes, but it's Italian. So, you know, my husband, Marino, was Italian. And so it was funny because before I was leaving the house today, I was um, my husband was on the phone. He was speaking Italian. And I'm walking. I'm just doing shit, you know. It's because we got a new bed today. By the way, we got a sattva, so I'll let you know. It's that bed that okay. you can only buy online, and it's organic cotton, and, you, oh. and they don't believe it to be in retail stores, and you have a 75-day money-back guarantee. You can try this bed for 75 days. You know, it's pretty awesome. Um, so we're real excited. Tonight's going to be my first night on the bed. But um, but he's speaking Italian on the phone, right? And as I'm walking around the house like this, and I'm my son's coming home from Thailand tomorrow, so I'm thinking, mm-hmm. thinking, thinking, and I'm realizing that I understand everything he's saying on the phone. Uh, now, I do not speak Italian, but I have to tell you something. After 20 years, I think I got it I, a little bit nailed on what Yay. they're saying. You, you know, seriously. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, Jennifer Buonantone, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> we, love, we love those applause. Right. We love those applause. You know what? I think maybe you need to move your mic a little, a little bit closer. closer. Yeah. There we go. Um, just close enough so that it's really... 
Uh, can we do How's just that? a little check? We did have check, my check, check. my favorite guy run a little bit, you know, here at UBN. We're like back to back shows. What? So he took, like, right took up your time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, hey, thanks for being here. You walked into a world will, whir, will, whirlwind green room well, situation. I know. I like it, though. <laughs> we were talking. Um, we were actually talking about women's rejuvenating women's vaginas. You missed a really good conversation. When, when I mean, I walked in on it. I'll, yeah. I'll rush the in. rerun on that one. She walked in on that one. And they had wine, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Misty and, and Drew always have something. I didn't know that they were going to be here. So, Tony, I went over to the Rite Aid, and I got pretzels, and I got, <laughs> look, I got these little donuts. 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 Those are the best donuts. Ah! Oh, God. I'll See, it didn't even, one. like, you want, you want some Just of these? One. I knew somebody would want some. They put those right by the register, those donuts, too. Like, as you're leaving, you're like, oh, powdered donuts. Well, they have the and hostess. They're only like 69 cents. They have the hostess <laughs> section. And I was like, okay, is it ding dogs? Is it snowballs? Or is it uh, sugar covered donuts? Mm -hmm. And then I saw the MM mega section. So here's these, like, that gig a big MMs. Gigantic MMs. Uh huh. I'm going to get you one. Tell me. So, Jennifer, <laughs> you own Press Pass LA, mm -hmm. and I want to hear, tell me about you, because you know I left my phone and everything in the car, so you have totally to introduce fine. yourself, honey. I'll introduce myself. Uh, so, I own Press Pass LA. Mm -hmm. It's an entertainment website. We cover entertainment news. Uh, we don't focus on gossip, which is surprising to some people, because a lot of the sites out here do focus on gossip. We tend to focus on people's uh, stories of how they got to where they are. So, if we're interviewing a big celebrity, you know, we want to know, how did you get to this position, and... No, you know, most people aren't, as they say, you know, an overnight success. It might take 10 years to make an overnight success. So we kind of delve into that because we want our listeners and our viewers at home, you know, if you're sitting in, I don't know, South Carolina thinking, I'm going to move to Hollywood, maybe what is your path? Like, what do you have to do to make that a reality? So we kind of delve into that. We do a lot of uh, charity coverage as well because a lot of the big stars are very, they're not just showing up, you know, they're very involved in charity. Yeah. Uh, and they're also, they have a lot of hobbies. I mean, people, you might know them as a musician or an actor, but they might also run a dog, you know, an animal rescue shelter. Um, they might also have an art gallery. So we really get into that. And we also do a lot of coverage of up and coming talent. We really try to break uh, who you should be looking out for, whether that's new media stars like YouTubers, whether that's radio podcasts, whether that's just up and coming actors. That's interesting. That's awesome that you say that. So um, I'm obviously a lot older than you are. No. Which is great. I think it's awesome. Uh, and because when you're, you know, I've been in LA for a very long time mm -hmm. and I've been in, you know, I've been a host and I've been on live shopping and I've been a producer and I've been, I've done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I was, I also have lived a Los Angeles kind of pseudo celebrity life where, you know, your name's on the list and you get into these places mm -hmm. and you live in the afterlife of the after <laughs> dark of Hollywood, right? And, and we've all sometimes been there. Sometimes you're like, How, is this my life? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And it started very young for me um, and it took its twists and turns. But I always like to stay tapped into uh, that's why I wanted to have you on the show, because I thought it was really interesting to um, uh, uh, we uh, let me let me back up. We met not physically, but we met because something came up where Press Pass LA was doing something with the Culver City Hotel. Mm -hmm. We were throwing a blogger brunch. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And for some reason, I saw that. And I thought, you know, I always, in, in 1993, 94, we had our offices across from Culver Studios on the Inns, and Culver City was nothing. It mm -hmm. was nothing. There was one Italian restaurant, and the and the Culver City Hotel had, had broken windows. And I said to my ex-husband, now current ex-husband, at the time, I said, Culver City is so, it could be so awesome, mm -hmm. right? And he said, what are you talking about? It's got the whole hotel, it's got a broken down windows. But we had those, like these really cool kind of, you know, um, open space offices for this infomercial company that we had, 60 Bio Diet, uh, in Culver City. So when I saw that, I thought, you know, yay! You know, I know Culver City Hotel is awesome, and Culver City is awesome. Does anybody Beautiful understand now. how, what a wreck it, it was at one point? Yeah, and they you have know? some of that before and after, and if you talk to the new owner there, Maya, like she talks about, you know, taking it over and kind of bringing back, I mean... I so wanted to Wizard hear of that Oz, story. Like when Wizard of Oz shot, uh, yes, all the, at all the munchkins stayed there. Uh -huh. um, Tons and tons of yeah. like There's you know such cult history, fan movies right? filmed right there, and they're right by so you know they're right by the Sony back lot. That whole strip is it was, filled with so gorgeous. It wasn't so. Let me fill you in on that one. It wasn't Sony back lot. 
it was Sony didn't exist, mm -hmm. right? So over here on the other side, so the hotel is on that weird corner, yeah. right? It's like on this corner. Reminds me of that, that corner in Manhattan, actually. Yeah, in, mm -hmm. in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so it's on this corner, and it's old school building, really super old school building, really retro, I mean, really old school, probably 1900s, yeah, 1920s, it's... maybe. They kept um, that charm, too, when oh, you go yeah. in there now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then on this side of it is where Culver Studios is. It's, that's where they filmed Gone with the Wind, mm -hmm and all of that then on the other side of it is that's where sony came in they came in years ago but they came in but sony never really existed so at the time of doing wizard of oz mm -hmm. and gone with the wind both of those and they gone with those moments exactly that was the only it was just the hotel mm -hmm. it was really just this whole hotel that was there so it's just tony have you been there have you been to culver yeah, city oh, yeah. each room well in the was, hotel each just room last week each room is decorated different, and they have all the history, you know, as you walk through. It's really eclectic so and really awesome. There. how did that, uh, I just am so curious about <laughs> it because I didn't get to go to the event. But how did that happen? Did somebody come in and buy it? Because I remember it from back in the day from just being a run down. Nobody would ever even think about going inside that place. Yeah, somebody came in and bought it, I think, a couple, just a couple of years ago. Not even rene fully renovated the whole thing. And uh, I can't think of the phrasing that she said. It's sort of like you know, the sea had washed it ashore sort of thing, you know, because it, it was just so run down. And, I mean, it is It was so stunning. out. It, it was, so it was in. It is so yeah, stunning It now. is. It is. You and have to go there. The whole area has built up. Yeah. And Culver City's in them is uh, it's pretty awesome because I told my ex husband, of course, my ex. He always says now he says, Wendy, you remember that time you said to me in 1993, <laughs> if there was any place I'd buy a house, it would be here in Culver City, and I, right. you know, and he would and 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 he would say to me, well, why would you want to live in Culver City? It's got one Italian restaurant <laughs> and an old beat up hotel, right, and a studio. But that was before Sony was actually even there. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's pretty awesome. But anyway, that's how I know Jennifer. And but Jennifer, you're mm -hmm. also a stand-up comedian. I am. <laughs> I, I just recently started claiming that, but I am. <laughs> so tell us about that. I want to hear about that. And then we'll get a yeah. little bit more into Press Pass LA sure. and the Oscars and the award season here mm -hmm. in, in in LA and all of that stuff. But I find you fascinating. <laughs> so well, thank you. Well, my path has been very different. I mean, you talked about having a lot of different, you know, yes. jobs out here. Um I've been here twelve years, which is not as long as you, but for an L L.A. person, it's pretty long. I mean, 12 years is a long time. And I moved out here. Uh, I went to Syracuse. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a writer. My family was like, we're not sending you to school for acting. But I went. I went for screenwriting. I went for, I don't know why they thought that would be more safe of a career, but I went for screenwriting. <laughs> I went for journalism. I minored in acting, all that stuff. Came out here, uh, you know, and did that whole thing. So I, you graduated from Syracuse? Graduated from Syracuse. New house, new house kid. A lot of new house kids out here. Um, and I was smiling. Anybody else go to Syracuse in the room? <laughs> I'm handing Tony uh, a big giant uh, M&M. <laughs> nice, nice. I thought I thought maybe he went to Syracuse for a second. I was like, Orange man, let's go. Um, but yeah, no, I went to Syracuse, moved out here, um, moved out here four days after graduating. Tried to get a job, and and basically told people. You so know, how old does that make you? Twenty two. Right now, twenty three. No, but when you moved out. Oh, here. when I moved here, I think I was twenty or oh, one. Twenty one. No, I was like twenty one. Yeah. Um, 21, almost 22, but I moved out here, but I didn't stay. I moved out here, stayed in a hotel in uh, Santa Monica for a month, interviewed all over the place, and everyone's like, wait, but you don't live here? I'm like, so just what? hire me, and I'll, and I'll move here. So I was going to- What year is that? Uh, that was 2004. Okay. And so, or no, it was actually, it was 2000, so I graduated in May 2003, so it was 2003. Came out here, did that, <laughs> went back to New York. I had been working, I had been interning at Tribeca Films for a long time, uh, which is Gene Rosenthal and mm -hmm. Robert De Niro's company. And they ended up hooking me up with a job at Innovative Artists in New York. So I did that for a year. Uh, I couldn't turn that down. It was a definite thing. Did that what for, for a year. What is Innovative Artists? Is that like a talent it's agency? It's talent agency. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a year. I uh, stayed in New York for a year, which was nice. Saved a little money. Saw family. Then ended up getting an opportunity to work on The Apprentice with Donald Trump. Mm. Uh, one of the first seasons. So I took that gig. My first set job. And then Mark Burnett Productions hired me. And I came out in 2004, which is when I moved here. Uh, and have been here ever since. And I did about I did about I don't know seven years of set uh, production assistant and and a second second AD work. And then we're not productions. No, uh, there were some really great female uh, ADs on set. So I did uh, I did Apprentice and The Contender with Burnett Productions. And then I did um, a bunch of TV shows. I worked on House, Desperate Housewives, and Grey's Anatomy. And then I worked on a bunch of movies, War of the Worlds, Thank You for Smoking, uh, a couple other smaller movies. And, As an uh, AD. Uh, right. As a PA and then as a second, second AD. Mm -hmm. And realized I didn't really want, that never really was what I wanted to do. 
Uh, and People I really, don't realize how you know, boring it really is. <laughs> oh, man, you work like I, I had been here at that point, like seven years. And I'm like, do I have any friends or I do know. I just have crew friends? You, you know, you just live on set. But there's something awesome about it. I spent a lot of time around the actors and directors, which was cool because I wanted to be a writer and actor. But yeah. I quickly realized I'm I'm never going to be a writer actor like this. Switched gears back to the talent agencies for a while. And so it was a long pass. I, I, ch I changed around before I started Press Pass LA. But the whole time I was auditioning, writing and writing comedy. And so just this year, I, finally, a casting person convinced me to do stand-up because I was never like a big stand-up fan or a big improv or SNL fan, which people think is weird. But I was never really into that. But I just started doing stand-up about a year ago. Kind of fell in love with it. And, What's your birthday? Uh, Sagittarius, November okay. 25th. Okay. <laughs> Sagittarius! <laughs> I know, we, we, we uh, are adventurous and we change our minds a lot. But um, yeah, and so got into stand-up and I've been doing it ever since. I do it at the Hollywood Improv. On Melrose, um, I sometimes do it at. Uh, what was it like the very Mallow. first time you went up there? The first time was really cool, to be honest, um, because it was all first timers and a couple headliners they brought in. And I still will say my best. I think my best show was my first show, maybe because there was a lot of love and friends and support in the room, and because you're just like so excited. And it was really weird because Anthony Anderson was in the front row right there. Who's Anthony Anderson? He's on that show, uh, Blackish. You know what I'm talking. He's the main guy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he happened to be there at the improv that night, and so and I was the first one from the the beginners. It was the headliner, and then like the opener, and then me, and that was like you know a, a working comic. And so I went up first, and I looked down, and I like literally the first thing I see is Anthony Anderson, and for a second I'm like, oh my god, there's a real comic right there in the first row, you know? But he was cracking up the whole time, and it just made me feel like very his his laugh is so loud. And it made me feel really comfortable. If I ever meet him, I mean, it's funny. I've seen him on a bunch of red carpets, but we've never really talked. I'm going to have to tell him that. But he was there at my first show, and it went really well. Do, and you, do you think performing in front of a live audience is drastically different than performing or doing anything in front of a camera? Um, they're different, but I think for I personally, for me. Which one do you like better, and how do you think they're different? Uh, well, I mean, well, okay. everyday people would never understand that uh, question. Yeah, I but. think that, um, like, stand-up is very different from theater, you know? Like, I never really loved theater. Never really got into theater. I did it in high school, all that, but it wasn't really my thing. I don't find it to be that much different from acting personally because I think you have to be very in the moment when you're live. You have to be able to improv and react to the audience and really just be in that moment. You can't get ahead of yourself and, like, lead the jokes, even if you have them in mind. And I think if you're, I mean, I'm gonna say I'm a, you know, if you're a good actor, if you understand acting, you know that it's really about, especially if you're doing on TV or film, your every little movement is magnified, mm -hmm. and it's really just about listening in the scene. Like it's not even about your lines; it's about listening, and then really delivering that as if that is that moment and the the the, la the first time you said it and the only time you've been there. So yeah. I think that kind of training was very helpful for me, and it's the same thing in hosting. Like you have to be in that moment. I mean, you don't know what someone's going to say to you. So, um, they're very dynamically, they're, they're extremely, um, uh, the, the only, the only one that I don't really have any experience with is being, uh, is actual acting. Right. I was, uh, I mean, I was in theater when I was in high, in high school, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, but I was never in theater professionally. And well, I have to take that back. I worked for club Met for a long time. And every night we would have to perform mm -hmm. on stage. And I would have to perform whether it was lip syncing New York, New York and being Liza Minnelli or it was doing David Bowie or whatever it might have been. There's like three or four acts that I had to do nightly mm -hmm. to entertain the guests. Um, there was nothing really that I had to do with my own skill other than follow direction, right? I wasn't really singing, you know, New York, New York. But... Um, there's they're they're each so very different. Like mm -hmm. if you were to take a, a hosting, to well, you know I did a lot of live shopping. That's live television mm -hmm. where you're actually trying to sell a product. PVC types, right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I've auditioned for that before, and it is it's different as it's well. It's very mm -hmm. different. It's very difficult, and it's very very different. Very precise where you hold the products and how. Oh you yeah, show how you hold them and what you're the, looking at mm -hmm. and the different monitors and then the the producer talking to you in the ear and then you have to understand your buzzwords and you have to say them because that's what's going to spike the calls to come in and and you have to look at the monitor that's showing the spiking of the calls. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really multitasking when you're on and it's live and then you have to deal with the yahoo that they put on the line to talk to you and then you have to deal with the host who the host is trying to 
you know, like come in and say, oh, but Wendy, you know, yeah. it's like, no, shut the F up. <laughs> you know, I need to sell this product right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not going to waste my time talking to you. I'm talking mm-hmm. to them, you know, but they're very different skill sets, I think. Yeah. You know, and, and doing stand up comedy, we were talking in the green room. I would always would I would love to do I was saying an open mic stand up com- stand you just a stand it. up just act it. you know that's why I'm so curious what it's like the first time you walked out there and you actually had to be funny I, I mean I like, was ner- ah! I was nervous but it was weird I was nervous beforehand like I felt like I was gonna throw up like right beforehand I was like oh my god what am I doing you know but as soon as I was up there I was calm I just felt really calm and I just did it. And, and I kind of still feel like that every time I do it, too. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. exactly. So is that really what what do you like best about what you do? Um, so, I mean, I do some, I do a lot of different things. But in terms of that, you know, every, every comic, like one thing I've learned about this town, every person has their own opinion of like what acting and what comedy and what everything is and what's what. No, you're not a real comic if you don't do this. You're not a real oh actor God. if you don't do that. I've only been doing stand up for a year and I've had other stand ups be like, oh, so you don't have a set? So, because one thing that's different about me, I because I'm a busy, a busy person, I don't get up and do the same set every time. Like I've oh, seen comics set, like that, set. yeah, that yeah. do the same routine. Yeah, I could do their time. routine because yeah. I've seen the routine twenty mm-hmm. times now, mm-hmm. and I usually only perform once or twice a month because my, because of my schedule. And sometimes I will repeat jokes, but I've done probably twenty five shows, and I've probably done twenty different sets, like no repeats, because I like to get up there. And talk about whatever is bothering me or whatever I'm feeling. Literally that day, a lot of time, I decide what I'm going to say that day. Like, sometimes right before. Because for me, that comes in with my, like, I guess, years of acting training, too. It feels the most organic to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it's and it's not no preparation. I will prepare in other ways. Like, I will, I'll think, I might think about what I might talk about, you know, throughout not, the month. But you're not preparing a script. But I don't prepare, like, a real yeah. set. Thing. I yeah. just tend to get up and I don't know. That's my method. Yeah. Other comics, well, have, obviously, they, don't, that's no, they my, don't like it. That's my method also. So <laughs> that's why my show is called Unfiltered, right? Unscripted, I, Unrehearsed, and Unfiltered. I think you have to do what works for your personality. You know. Well, I just I I can't imagine. Um, you know, I, sometimes I think, well, I need to be more professional on my radio show. You know, maybe I need to be more professional and I have to do this and I have to do that. No, listen, but it's to, your show. listen to this guy. The- he does it this way and listen to that guy. He does it that way. And, and then I think, well, no, you know, it's it, that's the genius and that's mm-hmm. the uh, that's the thing that is unique mm-hmm. about what it what makes you special it's like i don't want people tuning into my show and having to listen to a bunch of commercials <laughs> yeah you know seriously i have a i have a podcast that i listen to and and you know he's starting to do like three commercials like in the podcast it's just like shut up i gotta fast forward <laughs> no I, I don't want to listen to that you know yeah you have to do what your whatever makes sense for your style you know i mean the first time i hosted anything i had no hosting experience either i had been uh hired to help it was a tommy hilfiger owned state Hill figure owned uh, thing. They basically wanted his uh, nephew to be a host, so they wrote this show for him. And I was basically writing all his questions, all the research, everything. You know, they had a set show with hosts, and they had a live red carpet show. If you've ever been to a red carpet, live is the most boring thing. I mean, what the whole premise was? It was before Periscope and before sh- like streaming was real popular. They're like, we're gonna go live, and we're gonna like turn the camera on as soon as we get there on the red carpet and leave it rolling the entire time. What that really looks like is about an hour and a half of nothing happening yeah. and yeah. 15 minutes of crazy flurry. Yeah. And so it wasn't really working out. And since I had been prepping everything, there was one day where uh, he wasn't there and I-, I jumped in. And because I had done like so much research and prep, I was able to fill the space for like two hours just talking. <gasps> I would oh I would interview anyone. I would interview the security guard and ask him, how many premieres have you seen here in your, you know, 10 years of doing security at the Arclight or whatever? You know, right. I would just fill it. Or know the history. I would know the history of the El Capitan Theater, whatever I had to, to fill the space. And that was like, you know, very good training for me with being able to improv and be live. Exactly. So that brings us to improv. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna. We're actually that brings us to cutting for a commercial break, and then we're gonna come back it. and we're gonna talk a little bit about improv. Six degrees of separation. How how things are so weird <laughs> in 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 in, uh, in Hollywood. And um, but we will be right back uh, after Tony asks me about my sponsor. <laughs> Wendy, who is your sponsor? <laughs> 
So, Tony, let me tell you. Anyway, it's really interesting. So, um, it's a funny story. Uh, I am so grateful because I am now every Tuesday night at, at 8 o'clock uh, here at UBN. And it's only because um, Direct Avenue has come back to be my sponsor. And it's really wonderful because Scott Kowalczyk, who is the owner of Direct Avenue, really sees the value of the show and what it has brought to Direct Avenue. And also, um, it's wonderful for us. So, Tony, did you want to know want to know more about Direct Avenue? I do because it's I from what I've heard, it's a great company and yeah. they do great things. They do, they do, they do. So, if anyone has ever wondered about how to put a television commercial on television, I want to. I mean. Most people don't think of that as, oh, I could do a television commercial. I could put it on TV. But wait a minute. How do you do that? Right? Uh, Direct Avenue is the media buying and planning agency for direct response television commercials. It doesn't even need to be direct response for any television commercial. But what they do is that they have such great... um, in, um, when you're an entrepreneur and you mm-hmm. want to put your television commercial, you want to do a commercial or a video or whatever, and you want to have it on television, you have to be very conscious of what the costs are and you know what it's going to do for your bottom line. And that's what Direct Avenue brings to the table is because they've negotiated these, un- it, these incredibly low rates. Mm-hmm. They're the only agency that C-Spot Run, my company, uses to buy short-form media. Uh, for my uh, for all of the clients that we work with, um, but they are they're very tenacious and they're very uh, they've been around for a long time and they always have your bottom line you know in mind. So they do a media plan for you and they they come in and they say you know you might it, what, here's what, here's what's funny it's what's very interesting is that clients clients might come in and they'll say to me but wait a minute look at this media schedule it only has like these what are these stations? Now, they're national cable television stations. They're proven to be effective in your targeted market, which is what Direct Avenue specializes in. And uh, it mi- you might not know who they are, but it really doesn't make any difference because as long as you're putting your television commercial on the air and you're selling a product and it's paying out at a profit. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So that's what Direct Avenue does. And they're completely trusted, very boutique, very uh, wonderful. And you can um, call Scott or... Or uh, get a hold of Scott at Direct Avenue, just how it sounds. Scott at Direct Avenue. He's the CEO, and he'll pick up the phone, and he'll talk to you or email you back at any time. But they're awesome, and that's who you should use for your media buying and planning. I might just do that. There you go. So we'll be right back uh, after this short break. In an average lifetime, 1,500,000 minutes are spent on the toilet. So what's the problem? When you sit on a toilet, you're at a 90 degree angle. Nature didn't want us to do it that way. This causes pushing, straining, hemorrhoids. That's crazy. We want to create a product that is great for humanity. Well, go time just got easier. Introducing Easy Go Pro, the only way to go. Anatomically, we were designed to eliminate at a 35 degree angle. You just sit, lift, and go in a natural position. The benefits list is this long from a pure health perspective. A healthy colon is encouraged by doctors for all ages. The key to vitality is the key to longevity. It's the key to your health. Be a healthy goer. Order now at easygopro.com. Try it for 70 days. If you don't absolutely feel better, just send it back for a full product refund. Go time just got healthier at easygopro.com. Hey everybody, we're back. And if you're watching on on or you're watching on YouTube, um, how does my hair look? Fabulous. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so I'm here with Jennifer uh, Monantone, and uh, she is CEO. And you're one of the only people that can get that right. Monantone. <laughs> I know. I know. When I saw it, I knew. I knew. I knew how to say it. <laughs> um, but you're CEO and owner. Are you? Are you owner? Mm-hmm. Owner of Press Pass LA. Yes, I am. PressPassLA.com. And let's talk a little bit more about, because our, the time will fly by now, um, it's award season. Uh, you guys must be very busy. But I also understand that Press Pass LA, you kind of have a different attitude, and you and you look at things differently as far as what it is that you w- really want to bring to the public eye um, yeah. with your clients. So, I mean, I think we talked a little bit about it just mm-hmm. when it opened up, that we do a lot of kind of charity, positivity right. focus, breaking right. new talent. And we also, right now, like we cover a lot of local LA events, which I think is really important. Um, and as we 
you know, as Press Pass LA expands, I mean, we have a national presence, but eventually we'll have other branches. We like having that. You like, have awesome photography, by the way. Thank You're, you. Who, who is your photographer? Is we have several different photographers that are really great. Uh, I mean, Tony, we have this girl, Jesse Rodriguez. We have Mike Dannenberg. A lot of really great photographers. Awesome. I was so impressed by that. Can you go to the... There you go. There are some... There's photos of... There was Outlaw. You covered... Um, what is it? It's um, what's that one right down there on the yeah. corner, Jen? Oh, Hangover. Hangover. Yeah. Hangover three, but then the one next to it with Selena. Yeah, there's so there's some beautiful photographs in there. We Whoever honestly took those. got some. We have such an amazing team of like reporters and photographers, and you know, as a new site when we started, you know, we found people that maybe didn't have a lot of experience but were really enthusiastic and. They've turned out to be such great, talented people. I mean, a lot of them have been scooped up. One of them, like I just mentioned, he's been named top five uh, new photographers in L.A. by CBS. Like, big big things have happened for a lot of people that have been on our team, so we've been really lucky to get them kind of involved in collaborating there's, there's, and contributing. There, there's some in the Selena one. Like, if you scroll through, Tony, the Selena one, there's there, the way that they're captured, like, who, who are these? I mean... I love that. Yeah, they that. capture it. It kind of feels more like a portrait. It's so organic, and um, it's so real. And and uh, there's a couple with Selena and... Um, who is that? Oh, are those, are those, those the all... Producers Tony, I don't know what we're seeing on... on I think you're at the, I don't get, know what the getaway looking at. Are they looking at that one? Okay. But if you go scroll through our galleries, I mean, we have yeah. everything. I mean, we, we just did the, um, the Choice premiere this week. Um, we just did the Santa Barbara Film Festival. Uh, those are on our social media. They're not on the site yet, but they'll be up this week because it's still going yeah, on. See, I really like the way that they're, they're, there's just things. Like, people don't understand that when you see a photograph mm -hmm. and then you see it online or you see it uh, not in its non-organic form, mm -hmm. they've been Photoshopped. There's Everybody's got their wrinkles taken out. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, I of course, I even do it, you know. Um, but I really like the essence. There's a couple from... Uh, uh, that I saw that were in black and white that were just yeah. gorgeous, just gorgeous. And some of the concert ones are amazing. I yeah. mean, we really have like a lot of talented people on the team, um, just really great people on the team. So how did you form Press Pass LA? What was your inspiration? So um, I think right before we broke, I said I was, I had done that live hosting and I had been freelancing with other um, hosting sites at the time. And I just thought, I kind of thought to myself, hey, I could do this and maybe I can do it better. I don't know if that was cocky or just like crazy thinking. I was literally on a red carpet and I'd been out there for hours. I wasn't getting paid. I was soaking wet. It was a rare rainy day in L.A. And you were and working for yeah, nothing, which I, is not a rare rainy yeah, day no. in L.A. And I was asking, like, the dumbest <laughs> questions that people wanted, that I was told to ask. You know uh, like, you know what? I saw I saw an interview that you did. And I went on your on the website, mm -hmm. and I saw something, and I thought to myself, you fucking it. I'm sorry. I'm going to say <laughs> the F word. But whoever it was that you were asking questions to, I don't know why you have it on the website, but you do. And you shouldn't. Uh, he did this to you three times in a row and I do not maybe he was very famous I don't know who this famous. guy is but you would ask him question and he would go oh really yeah well a lot oh, of times really, really yeah I guess so celebrities aren't that great you'd be surprised a lot of them are not that great at being interviewed and a lot of them are scared some of them are scared of the press sure and I over know a time, lot of celebrities but I yeah. tell you don't put it on your website because well, this guy was, was such a you know I have to show you you have to show because me because I went because I usually like, put good clips I'm not gonna lie <laughs> unless he's really famous but he was a really like Hmm. Really, dude, I wanted to, I wanted to just knock him one. I'm wondering. I'm, I'm yeah, trying to think. I have who, to show you. Tell me who it was. Sometimes I do leave stuff up there so for people to see what it really is like. But usually, I only put. <laughs> well, he deserves I usually it. only put people in a good light, generally yeah. for them and just for us. Like we wanted to look yeah. professional, but um. Yeah, that's interesting. I yeah, thought I'm he was so insulting. Super curious. I thought he was so insulting. Oh, you and I didn't recognize him, so I thought it was even more unbelievably you know, surprised. Like, We've been on red carpets now for five years, and I've been on red carpets for eight years. And five years with my really own company. Insulting. People could be extremely rude, but it's part of the business, and um, it happens so we, amongst media outlets. Bigger, even on the on our side of the press line, you know, some media will be rude to other media and some media will be supportive to other media. I don't media. understand how that whole thing works. So explain to me the press line. Ah, uh, the press line. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for every... Or to our listeners, the press sure. line. Sure. So every major event has a red carpet premiere and those premieres are usually handled by a public relations firm. Sometimes the studios, the bigger studios have 
they they have their in house firms uh, or they hire out firms. Some of the bigger firms in LA are like Slade and Fox Greenberg and PMK. And so what happens is every time we get an event, uh, there's an event you get a media release. Um, you don't just get it. Like if you just start a website tomorrow, you're not going to be on. You have to basically reach out to these people, make those connections, get added to their media list. It takes time. But once you're on their media list, for every single event, you fill out what's called a credential application. Uh, you give like your viewership and links of your past work and basically why you deserve a spot. And then each event, they decide, yes, you get a spot. No, you don't get a spot. Once you get a spot, based on your, again, like your now rank. That's a spot on the press line. On the press line. And then your spot will be determined on the press line by basically how big your outlet is and what your viewership oh. is. So if you're like E, you get one of the first couple spots. If you're a small star startup website, you probably won't get a spot. <laughs> but if you're a bigger website or a more established website, you'll get a spot. But it might be way farther down the line. So you don't know. You know, celebrities, a lot of times, they will come a few minutes before an event. If the, if the premiere starts at 8. The press will have to check in at 6. The carpet will open at 7. The celebrities will arrive at 7.50 or 7.55. They'll do two minutes of interviews with E and, you know, people, and then they'll start, their publicist will start to rush them and say, oh, we're out of time, we're out of time, they have to go, because they only gave themselves five minutes, you know? And then you're trying to rush for your questions, you try to get your questions in there, you get what you can, and then they go inside. And so the longer you're doing it, uh, the one thing for our site, because we don't, People have gotten to know us over the years, and they know that we're not going to ask them the uncomfortable questions, like if they just went through a divorce or there's a scandal. Like, they know that our – I mean, if there's a big scandal, they're not stopping at all. But if there's – generally, they know that our outlet isn't going to ask those questions that they don't want to ask. So You're we not BuzzFeed. We, we're TMZ. <laughs> like, we're not TMZ. Yeah. We don't stick a camera in their face. And, hey, TMZ is amazing at what they do. Like, they're so good at it. That's not what we're about. Um, so people do tend to speak to us because we're not going to ask those questions. And – the publicists that we've made relationships with, you know, will send us their bigger stars because we've made relationships with them over time and maybe we've covered their Isn't it crazy brand new stars that no one else wanted to cover. And we were like, sure, we'll cover them. They, You know, it's a game in this town and you kind of have to play it. And for us, like, we actually care about the new stars. They might be the next big star and hopefully they'll remember us when they are the so big you star. So focus, you focus primarily in the celebrity world, right? Not in the art world. Celebrity entertainment. All celebrity entertainment. TV, film, music. Um, we do cover art but usually as it relates. Like the, there's a Grammy event this week. It's an art event uh, but Kiss, you know, the band Kiss will be there and it's some of the, the images are of Kiss through the years so like usually it has to relate back to some sort of celebrity tie-in. Oh, it does. To make sense for our yeah. site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we do a lot of lifestyle. I mean, we do L.A. lifestyle because everyone want, everyone all over the world wants to be a, a part of Hollywood, you know? And that also entails... If they only knew. <laughs> well, I mean, that entails seriously. to them, right? <laughs> what are the cool hot spots, the places to eat, the brands they should wear? If so. you can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It's not Every, as glamorous as people everybody think, Everybody thinks right? they want to live in... In like Hollywood, it's like, you know, are you kidding me? You really want to live in Hollywood? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Well, you know, hey, like I pinch myself sometimes because, you know, but it's not as glamorous as you think. I mean, for the press especially, like we have to get to events, especially major awards events. I mean, we go through a huge, we jump through a lot of hoops to even get there. And then once we're there, we'll be standing there for five, six hours usually for maybe a chance to get a quote. You know, it's. It's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of work and it can be very unfun, what's but it also can what's feel very glamorous. What's fulfilling about it for you? What's fulfilling about it? I mean, for me, it was always my dream to work in Hollywood. And for me, like when I f hear someone say, oh, my God, your story was my first press piece. And now I, I have not OK, so I have a friend and I can't say because it's not revealed yet what show he's going to be. He's going to be a, a lead on a very, very popular show this upcoming season. And we did some of his first interviews before, like he was considered sure. anybody sure. in this town. Now sure. he just signed with. One of the big five agents. Everybody wants him. He has brand deals. People are asking him to wear stuff on the red carpet. Yeah. And we joke around. He's like, I can't believe you interviewed me when I did that short. You know? And so that, I love that. You well, know? What I found interesting was last week I had on Brion Davis. And Brion is in Embrace of the Serpent, which is nominated for Best Foreign Language mm -hmm. Film. And, um, and I said to him, remember I said something about being on the red carpet? And he said, well, it takes a publicist for me to do that. Although he has a ticket and he's a star of this mm -hmm. Best foreign language film nomination he still and the sad thing is is if he wa walks the carpet a lot of outlets i'd say 90 percent won't even bother to interview him because exactly. it won't make their final cut but right. for us we do like we i mean honestly like we interviewed 
the director of The Danish Girl. Like, that movie has a million nominations. We interviewed him on the night of the Golden Globes, after the Golden Globes, at the NBC party. I saw tons of media be like, no, we're okay. Like, how could you not interview him? Because for them, for their job or for their outlet, he's not um, a star in terms of he doesn't have star power oh, visu- visually. Like, he's not a recognizable face because yeah. he's not an actor. Yeah. So he won't make their 20-second edit or their cut, so they won't even bother. It's such you know? a freaking Which is crazy. For dog. us, the we interview everyone. Business. And because we want to. Well, if you see Brion, mm-hmm. in, uh, interview him. Okay, He's gorgeous, and he was just, he's this one of the stars. There's two stars. Three stars, actually. There's uh, the Amazonian guy, and then there's the other two. And Brion, yeah, because he, he, go, he, he I guess he would have to go in, like, he doesn't go down the main red carpet. He goes in the... You'd be surprised when we, d- we covered the uh, Golden Globes, and we, there was a shuttle. You have to take a shuttle over to the Beverly Hilton, uh, the press, and also some of the talent. And we we found out that a lot of the talent who, sh- you know, shows, uh, the talent was there, but a lot of the writers and producers of shows that were nominated for Golden Globes, they don't get to go to the actual Golden Globes. No. They get to go to these, like, side viewing rooms yeah. within the hotel because there's not enough space. And At the Golden the, Globes. And, that's, that's and they well would known. rather have, yeah, and they would yeah. rather have the actor because... That's the visibility to the public, Mm -hmm. even if they're not the main actor, over the writer of the show, which is sometimes crazy, you know? So Hollywood's in an interesting place. (laughs) He gets to go. He just doesn't get... He gets to go as part of, you know, there's like this... I don't know, the tickets work in a funny way, right? Mm -hmm. But he he just won't be on the main red carpet. Yeah. Which is a shame, because how can you have a film that wins best language, foreign language film without the star being and that's his moment you think like oh my moment. god i'm in a movie it's <laughs> you know what would the film be without an oscar i mean I just have to ask that but question <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just seems so weird it's like it's like when a film wins best director and yet it doesn't win anything else mm-hmm. it's like how does, how does that happen it's an interesting town but it's like yeah. everyone has a, I, a love hate you know in la i think that's what it is you I have so many it. LA <laughs> stories. I have to do a show. It would be really fun to just do a separate show, which is just called LA Stories or <laughs> something like that. Because I have some really weird LA <laughs> stories. <laughs> Seriously, you should write a book. I always say I'm going to write a book one day about all my job. well, if I wrote Hollywood a book, jobs. Yeah, I would write five books. <laughs> It'd be like five volumes. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. So, what's up next for you, and what's happening? I mean, what's yeah. your next thing with with Jennifer? Okay, Bonantone, and um, and then with Press Pass LA. Sure. They're always sort of combined, but for us, obviously, we have um, Grammys and Oscars coming up, so most of our coverage is going to be around that the next two weeks. Uh, so I'll be running around L.A. So like a crazy pre- person trying to get everything. So for people listening, it's, you would have to go to PressPassLA.com, mm-hmm. and, and that's where you find all the updates yeah. and everything that you and guys are doing. And at PressPassLA on social media. Uh-huh. Um, so that's what we'll be doing that. Personally, I have a uh, comedy show. It's actually going to be my first. I've done the comedy store Every month, but this is my first time in the main room, the big room. Do you get paid? Which is the headliner room. Uh, you do get paid in the main room based on your ticket sales. So come see me February 16th. It's Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Oh, that's I next February 16th. Yeah, that's next, next Tuesday night. It's a night. week from tonight. But oh you God. have your show. I ha- I do. I have my show, and I have Saul, C- Saul Colt on. He's got a, I don't know, he's going to have a crew here for a reality thing that he's doing. But nice. they'll be doing that. But, and then he's doing some gig thing at the Roxy on Wednesday night. But Tuesday night, that sounds mm-hmm. like fun. That's where I'll be, in the main room. I'm excited. Okay, so tell me, where is that from uh, here? The Comedy Store, it is yeah. on Sunset. It's right in the Sunset Strip. and uh, Sunset and what? It's Sunset and just I mean, we're past at, we're, at, we're at Gower. Mm-hmm. So, we're so you have to go west, like two miles maybe. Oh, oh. okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's comedy. right by, you know, the Comedy the Store. Pa- Polly Shore owns yeah. Comedy Store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The main room, yep. I started out there in the belly room, which is the small room. Then I went up to the original room, which is the medium room. What's your shtick about? Now what do you What do you talk about? Well, I have a lot of different ones, uh, but I generally talk about coming from a big Italian family being the oldest unmarried girl and, you know, dating in L.A., which a lot of people talk about I dating in talk L.A. I about my Italian husband. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And I talk, uh, I do uh, one thing, one routine I did recently was the most annoying pe- people on social media because I work in social media a lot. So yeah. kind of pull that out and break that down yeah. for people. So it always kind of depends. It depends on what's going on with me. But Oh, my God, I have I just, to come next week, next Tuesday night. Tony, let's go. <laughs> cool. on, you can do the show the from the com- live from the comedy what store. Ti- what time do you go on? Uh, we don't. We won't know our set time until we get there. It starts at eight, but any time between eight oh, and right. ten. ten so 30. as long as you don't go on between eight and nine, I know eight nine thirty. I can text it'll, you. It'll take me a little while to get there. Yeah. 
Oh, I'll awesome. You know. John will be here. John will be here. And Cassidy will probably be here. There'll be three of us or four of us. Tony, you should come with us. That would be fun. It's a good time. Past your bedtime. Past your bedtime. Come, is it a fun place too? It's a good, it's a great venue. No, I'm gonna come. All right, seriously. Yes. Okay, so February 16th, the mm -hmm. com the comedy store. Yep. On, t on okay. So those are the next awesome. big the personal and and professional events coming up, and then also going with the site, we're uh, you know, we're in a phase where we're kind of trying to move to the next level. So we've been you know out to funding and things like that. So that's an exciting time for us, hoping to kind of take that next step and compete with some of the bigger. I wanted to talk about outlets. how how important PR is in mm -hmm. this in the realm of everything and why it is so different from marketing. Yeah, because PR is. You know, I, I didn't find, I own a toilet stool company, that's this. <laughs> and I also have a direct response agency, you know, creative agency, yeah. right? So, um, but I, I found with PR, with, and I don't do PR for, for myself or anything mm -hmm. like that, but for my toilet stool company, it's like, PR really for me didn't really, it's it's not, doesn't, well, doesn't do anything. Hmm. Mm. PR and social media Oh, uh, not PR is not yeah. social. No, media. they're different. Okay. But so they're I'm I'm a media marketing person. So so PR is not social media. PR they're is PR. Completely different. Yeah. But they completely depend on each other in a lot of ways. Today they yes. do. Mm -hmm. Today they do. So yeah. the last like, so you know when you run a website. When I started this website five years ago, it takes a while for a website to be self sufficient. So I've always had uh, a, a day job as a social media marketing digital a digital manager, and also I've done some PR with that as well because the, the agencies that I've worked with I, I freelance I still consult with three different agencies and everyone today realizes that those two things are codependent a little bit on each other you have to have you have to you have to work with them together so you have to understand how social media works and you have to understand how PR works and you have to understand if you're ready for them one thing I'll say like well everybody is ready for them I mean well, we everybody could, thinks they need uh everybody, everybody thinks they need a publicist but in the beginning, you can be, I mean, you can be your own publicist in the beginning because unless you have yeah, something to publicize. Via social media. Unless yeah. you have something to publicize. That was, yeah. was going to be my point. Unless you have something to talk about, mm -hmm. you don't have anything. So you know? your Press so Pass LA, we do social media and PR for, for brands and for clients. That's one of our like subdivisions. I mean, our main thing is entertainment news, but yeah. we do have a little agency division. And, uh, and that's the thing. I mean, I had someone the other day... They said, my son, he wants to be a famous singer. Son, Can you help him? You know, and you get that a lot. And the kid was adorable, and he actually could sing. But at the end of the day, I'm like, he has nothing to promote right now. You know, like, have right. him go out and make some YouTube videos. Have right. him book some roles right. or book some gigs or do right. some local. You need to be ready. I mean, like, you can't post tweets about nothing. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you need to understand how it works. Like, social media is is digital marketing. It, peop, you know, it's not posting just a picture of your food. It, this, there's a lot of strategy that's involved. That's right. And a lot that's of people right. don't fully understand what that strategy is or that they should pay for it and they should pay for it. You know, you can have an intern do it. You can do it yourself, but you're not really doing social media to the level of what social media actually is. You're just, you know, you're just well, doing your mom posting social media. Yes. I mean, you can be cost effective yeah. in your social media and what you're doing. You don't have to spend a whole ton of money to yeah. be effective in your social media. But you, you need to understand how to leverage it properly. Yeah. Right. And the, and the thing with public relations is, is that public relations really is nothing unless you have something to publicize. No one will write right? about your product if you don't have a good product. No one will write about your Well, even show. if you have a good product, nobody is going to write about it unless you've had enormous sales or mm -hmm. unless you've signed a celebrity yeah. or if you have a newsworthy item to be to publicize yeah. and if you have a right. good if you have a good publicist or a good social media strategist that that is what you're paying for is their job is to find what's interesting about it what makes it newsworthy and sell it that's their job yes but you also have a have a <laughs> you also have to have a budget to support that for sure you can't make something newsworthy if it's not really newsworthy yeah. but sure with a little bit of budget you can make yeah. it a little bit more newsworthy you know I what mean, i mean for example like you know with social media i've worked on you i've worked on huge brands that have you know five hundred thousand dollar budgets for the year to spend on digital marketing their posts are going to reach a lot of people because we're putting a lot of money behind them and that's we're targeting right. them that's right and now i've also worked with individuals who have a five hundred dollar budget, mm -hmm. and now that budget's not going to cover very much at all. So there, you know, you have to basically look at look at what the like. I don't take clients if I don't think it makes sense, you know, for them and for me. Yes, but I'm gonna. I, I'm so now I'm gonna put on my hat, <laughs> right? And and I have to I have to argue that a little bit. I mean, I come from the world for twenty years mm -hmm. of 
quantifiable advertising. I come from the direct response space. I come from the engagement space. Mm -hmm. I come from all of that, you know, before social media yeah. even existed. So, but there are, there are ways that you can effectively target people on a cost effective budget. It depends on what you're offering them. For sure. And it depends on, if you, if you only have something that is a sensational item, mm -hmm. right, that maybe isn't converting to a sale or you're not going to see any revenue generated from that and you just kind of want to see your, yeah, I don't know what kind of return. But um, there's the social media it can be sliced into so many mm -hmm. different different things. I dealt in the past two years since I launched my toilet stool company that with agencies that if, if they, they probably would have sat in seminars that I was teaching, mm -hmm. but yet they wanted to take $30,000 a month of my money. Well, that's crazy. So yeah, I mean, $30,000 th is exactly. crazy. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For anything, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's like... But they were so convinced that it's not that they were convinced. Because they can't guarantee you for that. They can't guarantee you anything. Nobody's guaranteeing yeah. anything. What they're mm -hmm. saying is they're going to guarantee that they want their $30,000. Yeah. That's all they're going to guarantee. They're not going to guarantee anything back to me. I'm not saying yeah. from a PR standpoint. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying from these digital agencies that are out there and saying, well, we have to spend all of mm -hmm. this money in order for you to see anything. And we have to spend it, by the way, for three months. Mm -hmm. You know, mm, no. no. And people are being taken Every all you can make so many things happen with consistent small budgets. Small amounts of you money. You just have to you, can. you have to manage your expectations for if you're only if you're spending this much money and you're reaching this many people. That's like, right. You, you have, have to, to manage, manage what your expectations. expectations. Right. But you're better off having two thousand real fans that are engaged and that will buy your project pro product or whatever your product is, if it's a physical product or if it's content, and that will share it with the people they care about than having fifty thousand fake fans. Well, I can argue that don't really I can care. Argue that mm -hmm. I can argue mm -hmm. that. I think there's a fine balance there where mm -hmm. that's concerned because people don't want to be your fan unless if you don't have if followers. you don't mm -hmm. have a I lot agree. of fans. Yeah. So and you'll you you're always going to know that there's a I certain percent yeah, mm -hmm. certain percentage of of your fan base are going to be influencers, mm -hmm. but the influencer th mentality kind of went out a couple of years ago because, yeah. it, you know, who cares if you have five really influential people? Mm -hmm. Nobody. They care. Even influencers care if you have 5,000 people quick, quick because thing, it's just, it's human nature. The quick thing is you say, how many followers do they have? You're like, oh, they have 60,000 followers. There must be something great. Exactly. So that your mentality is, I'll and follow no, them no, too. That's right. So that's very important mm -hmm. is to have a lot of followers um, for appearances, I think, yes. for marketing, yes. But I also think if your main goal is just, depending what your it, uh, it depends yeah, on what your, your return is. on investment yeah. is that you're looking for, yeah. but at the your end game, if they're not buying your product, it doesn't matter if you have sixty thousand followers. If your end game is to make money, if your personality, it's a little different because that's right. You're you're that's right. um if you're a host with a hundred followers, right. no one really cares. You know, you need but but and it, you it, understand it. People who work in it, right? Like I have friends who are like, I'm a host and I have sixty six thousand followers, and the average person is like, wow. But then I'll go to their post and I'll be like, no, you don't, because you have thirty likes and two comments, and that's not a yeah. And that nobody equation shares shit. <laughs> doesn't doesn't make sense. So you have the thing that people have to seven thousand fake followers, but that's that's right. You know, so you need to have the thing in social media is it's, it's who cares how many likes you have, yeah. how many shares do you have? It's about so the, it's when people share your post, everybody. Nobody cares if you like it, like it, like it, like it, like it. You have got to. Sh I mean, the people who care. Facebook cares when you and share. And when you work with brands. When you share. And you right? know, you you rub the brand, right? When you work with brands, all the brand cares about is how many people clicked back on those links and bought the product. And sometimes That's right. the brands are unfair because it can be both ways. Like, you know, if you see a billboard on Sunset, you don't go right into a restaurant and be like, I just saw your billboard outside. I'm here to eat. No, but you see that billboard 15 times no, and you might go to eat there. So it's mindset. two so different mindsets. So you're, you're, you're talking about general advertising versus direct response advertising. And so they're very, yeah. they're two very different mm -hmm. things. Um, there's a balance between, you know, both of those both, on both of social, those, which is, which is what's really awesome. But I can tell you something. I have my toilet stool company. <laughs> you can buy my, my product mm -hmm. on my Facebook page, literally buy it on my Facebook That's page. Great. I've never gotten one order. Really? But every day I get probably a hundred orders on Amazon. Hmm. So, you know, so then you push your posts on Facebook back to the Amazon page, right? Facebook doesn't like that. They banned me from advertising really? on Facebook because I was pushing them to, I found out it was because I was pushing when I would, and I was trained by Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they banned me. So for my toilet stool. Which reflected back on my radio show because it's all one account, right? Um, yeah, because I was pushing people that if you clicked on the ad, it mm. would take them to my Amazon. And that's what you should do. 
Or bit.ly tra- bit. link, track link no, it back. Not with Facebook. Facebook mm. wants you to stay on Facebook. So because I was they were approving my ads mm-hmm. and people were clicking through because I want people to buy on Amazon. Mm-hmm. People want to buy on Amazon. Mm-hmm. But because I was taking them to Amazon, Facebook. We should talk about banned this after. Me. That's surprising. No. <laughs> Watch out if he hasn't had me. I'm banned forever. Wow. I can't run one ad on Facebook. I've been trying. And I'm a good advertiser. I yeah. would spend a lot of money. I was spending a lot of money, but I can't get, I can't get back. They won't let me. And it, because it's all artificial intelligence and it's like I've been banned, so it's like and then fucking Zucker, sorry. Zuckerberg with his do you see his video with him with his little China baby or his <laughs> Japanese baby and he's speaking Japanese? Zuckerberg. It's like, "Really? You took 3 months off?" Who cares? You're a freaking trillionaire. Are you kidding me? There are people who, you know, to be with your baby? Really? What about the single moms of the world that can't be with their babies? I mean, mm. seriously, Mark Zuckerberg, it's so <laughs> fantastic. You took paternity leave? Have, have you you've not seen I haven't seen, seen this video, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> and people are just appalled by the fact that a trillionaire thinks it's really cool that he takes paternity leave and he didn't go to the office for three months to stay home with the little baby <laughs> mark zuckerberg well sorry i'm sorry <laughs> well a lot of very successful wealthy people do what they want to do right <laughs> yes but they don't get on into social media which is what we're talking about mm-hmm. and penetrate social media to where people actually praise this guy mm-hmm. for what he's doing give back to the single moms of the world give back you have so much to give mm-hmm. so give back to those people and help those people it's hard to know what's true too because there have been a lot of things lately i've so you've probably seen him on social media he's donating here he's donating no, no, their no, no, hoaxes that was all and their fake that was things all fake. and their yeah that was all so fake. people never know this is mark zuckerberg yeah. literally in a video with his little china doll yeah. baby and his wife and he's speaking chinese or japanese whatever it is i don't know i can't tell him apart sorry i gotta say it <laughs> all right and he's there saying oh yes and so the chefs came to our house and the chefs made duck dinner and you know i didn't really like the duck dinner that much but you know the little one here maybe he worked from home Okay. I'm so playing anyway, devil's advocate, Jennifer. Here. We gotta go. We're, we are. We are. We've gone over once again. Tony, thank you very Thanks much for having me. And uh, so, Jennifer Buonantoni uh, from Press Pass LA, and yeah. you have to catch her at the Comedy Store on February 16th, yes. uh, sometime after 8 p.m. 8 p.m. <laughs> and um, after they listen to your show, after they listen mm-hmm. to my show, and Jennifer, it was really great meeting you. I love having thank you. Thank you. On. Thank you for having me. <laughs> We're going to uh, we're going to toss it out to my did you do my new recorded thing that I sent you? <laughs> okay, Tony, thank you for for being here tonight. All right. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Good night, everyone. C Spot Talk Marketing Unfiltered is made possible by our sponsors, Direct Avenue, the television media agency where you can expect more. Contact them at directavenue.com. Ending music is courtesy of Tom Orsi at Orsi Digital. You can download audio episodes of C-Spot Talk Marketing on iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher, or enjoy the full-length video uncut on YouTube. Just search for C-Spot Talk in your directory, and while you're there, make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to John Hamilton and Tony Sweet for making Tuesdays the best night of the week. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, just send me an email at wendy at cspotrun.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Hey.